Wingardium Leviosa. That was a good one. That was a really good one. Slim Dog Science with me, Caleb Fleming. Subscribe, like, comment, hit that bell. Welcome science lovers. I'm happy that you're here today. I'm happy we get to do this experiment together. Today we're going to be looking at induction. Instead of doing paper shavings with our balloon, if you missed that video, check it out. But instead of doing paper shavings, how would it compare if we use some aluminum? Because aluminum is, is <laughs> aluminum is a conductive material. So what would happen if we used aluminum instead of paper? We could compare those results. So I have a number of experiments that'll look at that and then a few just kind of fun ones in the process too. Let's blow up our balloons. They tend to work for me a little better if they're larger. I got two balloons, I'm gonna set one aside. I have some paper shavings here. Look what happens when you put a balloon just over paper shavings without doing anything. Nothing. Now let me rub the balloon on my pants. Watch what happens. <laughs> That's so cool. That's always so cool. So all those papers stick to the balloon and some of them bounce off. Now, what happens if we use aluminum instead of paper? Let's do a comparison. Let's start out with some big aluminum squares here. That's so cool. Do you see it floating? And then they stop. So a couple of them stuck. Let's do a little bit smaller aluminum. Little smaller size. Let's do the same thing again. It's very interesting to me how some of them will jump and others of them will not. I don't have a great explanation for that. I wonder if you have any ideas. Try rubbing it on my coat. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Look at that. It just wants to stay. Just like that. How interesting. I even tilt it. It just wants to stay like that. So many cool things to think about. Let's try even smaller aluminum pieces now. Rub the balloon on my pants. Let's see what happens. Whoa! Those are seriously jumping. Is it not strange to you that they jump, which is going against gravity, but then they bounce off? That's really weird. Why would they go against gravity and then shoot away from the balloon right after they got really close to the thing that was attracting them. I have a fun little homemade electroscope that I just made. Here it is, okay? It's just a little foil ball with some aluminum down here. It's two little aluminum leaves. It hasn't been rubbed on my clothes, and I just bring it near, nothing happens. Now watch what happens when I rub the balloon. I'll just rub it on the table here, steal some electrons from this paper. You see that? And you might even be able to hear it. It does a little, like a little electrical discharge. So we see that they move apart. Why do you think those aluminum leads are moving apart? A thought is aluminum, kind of like copper in our houses, allows electrons to move really, really easy. Protons don't really move. Electrons will move really, really easy inside of our aluminum. Instead of doing one balloon, I'm gonna do two balloons. Do you see that? They just shoot up in between there. It's so cool. Let me try it one more time. Here we go. It's 
So the two balloon idea is really fun. And we'll see that that becomes even more fun with more experiments that we do. I made these little aluminum rings here and put them on a string. Watch what happens when we bring a balloon close to them. You see that? It comes towards it, then it shoots away. Towards it, then it shoots away. Look at that. It's almost repelling it now. What do you think's going on? Let me touch these little rings. Like this. Let me try it again. I'll start the process over. They come close and shoot away. And now it's repelling. And now they're both repelling. Is that not really cool? So what do you think is going on with the electrons that makes them at first attract to the balloon and then later shoot away from the balloon and then just repel after that? It's a really cool little sequence to think about what is happening to those electrons. I got some paper balls here. Let's watch what happens when we use paper balls, little spheres, instead of shavings. I'll rub the balloon and then we'll put it over the balls. Check this out. Isn't that fun? Let me even get rid of some so you just see one to focus on. You see that little bugger? Now, isn't it strange that it would jump up, touch the balloon, but not stick to it, and then bounce right off? I always feel like that's very strange. What do you think is happening that makes it fly up against gravity, but then not stick to the thing that's pulling it up? That is just, that is so fun. I could, I could mess around with this for a long time. We'll get all these back now. And now let's use two balloons. You ready for two balloons? I'll charge them up. You can see it right at the beginning. That's so fun. They just fly around. Did you see them bouncing in between the balloons? <laughs> it makes me feel like I have superpowers. It's like phys physics and chemistry is my superpower. And it's your superpower too, as long as you have a couple balloons. <laughs> Let's do some comparison now. That's paper. Let's see what happens if we have aluminum. Look at that, they still jump up and bounce around. And then they kind of stop. Let me see if I charge it again, if they'll keep going. That's weird, they stopped. Okay, they kept going, maybe the charge. What do you think the aluminum does to the electrons on the balloon? Right, let's try two balloons with these. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> that was kind of wild. Let's get some smaller aluminum and try this out. They have such a cool little weightless look as they're flying up. They kind of float and then accelerate towards the balloon. Isn't that cool? Okay, let's try with two balloons. I just love, when they fly up there right through the center, I think that looks so cool. You gotta try that one. Ooh, we got one there. Ooh. Let's see if we can get it to float up right through the center of them. That was pretty good. <laughs> That's just so fun. You gotta try this. We got these little tiny ones. We'll try to take them right out of the dish. Interesting. On the dish, they're not really wanting to jump. Let's take them off the glass. They might actually have been a little, ooh, that's fun. You couldn't see that 
but they jumped away from my finger. Those are very excited. Why do you think they jump so much more excitedly when they're smaller versus when they're larger? Very happy jumpers. I'm hoping we can see some kind of ping pong back and forth between the balloons. Look at that, oh, that was so So oh, cool, I hope that comes through. That was really cool. So growing up, Magneto was always one of my favorite supervillains. I kind of feel like Magneto right now. <laughs> yes, that is really fun. All right, let me show you the last one that I had in mind to really see it kind of, see something float up in the air. I got a little strip of aluminum. I'm gonna fold it into a little circle. Just like that. And I'm gonna use two balloons and let's see if we can kind of get it to levitate. That's pretty good. Ooh. Ooh, <laughs> that was nice. Any Harry Potter fans out there? Wingardium Leviosa. 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 <laughs> Wingardium Leviosa. That was a good one. That was a really good one. Okay, we better stop for the day. That's probably about all the time that I have. Um, that was really fun. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you try this because it's so fun. And as you're doing it, you can be thinking and coming up with your own experiments. Um, I tried just a handful before I filmed this over the last few days. So I hope you try some that are really fun and get your wheels turning thinking about the properties of conductive materials versus paper, which is not conductive. You can try different balloons and just have a great time with it. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time for some more science. try this. Do you think it'll work? I got the smallest ones. Nothing. Why does the aluminum balloon not work?